Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's African Composers interview. We have a guest with us today. I will allow him to introduce himself shortly. However, I would like to start by thanking anybody who is going to watch us live as we talk now and anyone who will watch this later as a recorded interview. Thank you for your interest, your support. As usual, feel free to post comments in the comments section on YouTube or questions for our guest of today. So we are going to go right into the interview. Our guest for today, William Chapman Yahoo. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you? Well, I'm doing pretty good considering this whole COVID debacle situation. and situation here. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing fine. Okay, it's good to hear you are well, fantastic. Thank you. So please introduce yourself. I got a little shy about this, but um, my name is William Chapman Yahoo, and I'm originally from Ghana, West Africa, and I I grew up in Ghana and uh, went to school at Achimota School in uh, primary and secondary school, um, and I come from a family. I come from a family of six kids. Uh, my father was an educator and also a diplomat. And my mother was um, uh, an educator as well and just did all kinds of amazing things, wrote books and all that. So um, I grew up in a musical, fam uh, musical household and my older sister played the piano and I had a sister who played the violin and, you know, other sisters sang. My brother Salma played the guitar, and so there was just music in the in the family. And um, being the youngest, I, <laughs> I guess I wanted to imitate them. So, and particularly my sister. So I remember my first my first piano lesson was really with my <clears throat> with my elder sister, and. I remember playing a Mozart, twinkle, twinkle, little star thing like that. Um, anyway, uh, I had my first formal piano lessons in Switzerland. And then when we came back to Ghana and I was at Achimota School, primary school, I took lessons with a, a wonderful teacher, Mr. Essa. And then in the, pri in the secondary school, I transferred to the most amazing teacher, Mr. John Barham, who is now back and retired in Norwich in England and um, went through all the ABRSM stuff and took piano exams and did my LRSM and then ended up in Oxford and studied music there and got my degree there and then went to Geneva, stayed with my sister and started taking piano lessons at the Conservatoire de Musique de Genève and had a good time there. I Oxford was more musicological theory and all that kind of stuff. And so getting back to playing the piano was really important for me. And so I did that in Geneva um, my mentor there was Oswald Russell, whose music I, I just adore, and also um, studied with a wonderful teacher called Henri Gautier. And then after that, I went to Eastman, had my, did my master's there under Barry Snyder, and then ended up getting my doctorate in in music in performance at the University of Texas at Austin, studied under David Renner and one of my mentors there, uh, and just a wonderful person and human being was Martha Hilly, and I was her teaching assistant. And from there, so I you know, did all my my education all over the place and. And then um, went to North Carolina as a visiting artist where I really had to put my performance hands to 
to a lot of use and was playing a lot. Um, did kindergarten students right through the scary middle school students who are never impressed with anything. <laughs> and then um, did all of that, uh, did social clubs like Kiwanis clubs and all of that and did real concerts with orchestras, pick up orchestras, and just traveled all over North Carolina. It's an amazing situation for those who were employed by the North Carolina Arts Council. Um, so I did that for four years and did a lot of playing, which really helped me in what I was doing. And then I got to Louisiana uh, and, and taught there at the University of Louisiana Lafayette. And my, my partner, dual piano partner, was Susanna Garcia. And we really kind of hit it off and became a dual piano group and we recorded stuff with Aaron Copeland, all the two piano and duet music of Aaron Copeland. And it was there that she and I actually went to a, uh, a conference called What is Pianism and in, in Pittsburgh and was being, um, it was being organized by the recently departed Akin Yuba and it was really interesting because that's where I really found a lot of music by composers of African descent. And, you know, it was so cool because there were theorists and musicologists, ethnomusicologists at this conference. And it just really set my path in this direction of trying to advocate music for, um, for uh, music of uh, composers from Africa and the diaspora. So um, in 2001, I moved to Seattle and settled there. And it was originally a, um, a leave of absence, but then I decided to resign from the University of Louisiana and, and start a studio and try and really um, just kind of really explore music by composers of African descent. It was a very, very important thing for me because in, in, in Ghana, when I was in high school, I really loved doing a lot of cultural dancing. I learned all the dances from different parts of Ghana. The University of Ghana would come to Achimota and, and teach us all these dances and drumming and it was just so vital for me. Um, and yet I also loved the music of the piano music I was being taught by Mr. Barham. And so there's a place where I needed to sort of bring those two parts of my identity into one whole by finding, um, by finding music by composers of African descent. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. And I guess that's it. <laughs> Fantastic. It's really good to get to know you, to meet you. And you have been on quite a journey. Uh, Thank meeting, you. Meeting at Kinyuba, starting basically back from when you were at home, talking about the influence of your family, um, talking about, you know, meet, uh, your interest in the music of African composers, and I think may, perhaps mainly piano music, the influence of music back home. This is quite a journey you've been on. I mean, anybody listening to you will say so much influence um, upon you as an individual. Um, I don't want to go straight into the deep end. You've got, you've got 10 people watching us at the moment, so there's quite an audience. Thank you very much for watching us, and feel free to post your questions. We've already received one comment and one video. Uh, question that somebody has said to me to, uh, to play during the interview. Uh, but before we before we go into the questions from, from other people, people who are watching us, 
-hmm. let's start with you as a composer so when i started the, when i started this interview i didn't say we have a guest composer today i just said we have a guest yeah, yeah. So you are mainly known as a performer you're described as a performer pianist but you actually are a composer tell us about the first well, you know i've actually okay so i mean ever since ever since pr um primary school i'd always wanted to compose and um, I even tried to do little things here and there. And um, but I think for me, I always had a big struggle in trying to create something which wasn't just Western music, you know, just European based, but trying to add something, you know, you know, of uh, my culture into it. And I just didn't, I just didn't, I just didn't want to just do something in four part harmony and then just add rhythms to it, you know? <laughs> so um, it's been very hard. So I've just started things and dropped them, started, dropped them. You know, I've been had a friend who so got me to, you know, promise to compose on Mondays at five o'clock, you know, and just kind of set out this side. But um, last year, ABRSM asked me, um, Dave, David Blackwell, actually, um, from ABRSM, asked me if I'd be interested in contributing to um, the ABRSM duet book. So that was my first foray into that. And so I, I actually got a, a piece um, published and was based on Tu Tu Bovi, which was um, uh, a lullaby that I, you know, that was sung to me when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Tu Tu Bovi, Tu Tu and you know, it's in my father's language. Of a, and um, so I got that down and <laughs> So I have one published piece. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. There are people who will go whole lifetimes and never get published. I thought you were going to tell us a story of you getting published decades ago. I didn't even know it was so recent. I mean, as recent as what, last year or so? Wow. Uh, actually, actually it, it came out in 2020. Wow. I submitted well done. Well, I, you know, I'm beginning to feel the bug, you know. One more African <laughs> composer. <laughs> so I, I, I qualify for your interview. I hope. <laughs> Don't worry, we also interview non-composers. As long as you support the work of African composers, you perform <laughs> their works or you write about them, you're welcome on this platform. But um, yeah, congratulations. Perfect. Comments are coming in for you from people who are watching. Uh, so said you didn't want to, shall I say, write in the style of, of Western music. Um, is, that, is that a necessary conversation to have with yourself? Oh my oh, goodness, it is, it is a huge conversation for me. I, I really struggle with that. You know, I, I admire composers. I just, I mean, when I, when I see the music of Bongani and Dodana, you know, and and you know all these other composers being able to write Joshua Zoigwe, you know, I mean the the way they're able to meld, you know, all this music and just create. I mean, it's it just blows me away, and you know, I just I just bow down to them, you know, and um, I really. I, you know, I have these thoughts, but I'm just, I guess I'm, uh, it, it's a very big struggle for me to be able to do something which I think would, uh, will not feel like it's, I'm colonized. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I do. I do. I'm just wondering how necessary that conversation is. And this is very interesting because a few days ago, I got a call from an African composer who's mm -hmm. gone to a conference. Mm -hmm. in Stuttgart, I think, or Frankfurt, mm -hmm. somewhere in um, the Netherlands, I believe. And he was, we were talking about the importance of 
well, basically what some may call your voice, your unique voice, you know, yeah. summarized in that way. I don't like that expression, but something like that. And uh, there were questions around um, the African, the uniqueness of the music. And I said, well, I am an African, but if I write maybe something that sounds like Gregorian chant, I will not reject it as the work of an African or as being African. Maybe not, maybe not exactly that, but I don't think we should be rejected just because we don't have a particular sound. It's true. It's true. It's yeah. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I don't, and I don't judge others. It's just me. I think it's it's just this thing about finding my voice. You know, Bongani has a voice. You know, all these composers you've you've you've. Um, interviewed they they have these amazing voices and i guess maybe i'm afraid i don't know we're maybe our own worst critics you know when it comes to you know trying to compose or perform you know okay i understand i understand it's because i just thought well when i had that conversation with him i thought yeah, I'm an African, it doesn't matter what I write. I don't have to sound in a particular way. And it took us to our experiences of people who have told us, try and make your sound more African. He, I didn't even know he had had that experience. I've had that experience too, twice, where somebody has said, I like what you've sent to me because they've requested works from me, but they've sent it back and said, this is brilliant. Can you just add something to make it sound, you know? Add yeah. a couple. Yeah. And I thought, oh God, okay. Um, right. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem. What do you say to things like that? Because I'm going to come to that when I talk about how you select whose works you perform. Okay, definitely, definitely. So what do you say to people who give that kind of feedback? Make your work more African, because that's something you've clearly thought about. Yeah, and and the thing is, um, and, and that's, you know, that's a, uh, a weird sort of way of neo-colonialism, you know, in the way that when they say make yourself make yourself sound more African, what does that mean? You know, it it so you're being judged, you see, you're being asked to compose something, you know, you're being stereotyped, first of all. When somebody says you need to sound you need to sound more African. What does that mean? You know, they're telling you that they're trying to stereotype you. They're trying to put you in a box. Do you see what I mean? And um, so maybe I am contradicting myself on where I stand with my, <laughs> with how I want to sound. But I think it's it's about having a voice, and everybody has a everybody has their voice and um, has a way. I I just I just want. I just think that it's important to to not feel bound by certain things one works, you know, one is um, educated in. Oh, okay. okay. Do you know what I mean? I understand what you mean. Now. Okay. The whole idea of having parallel fifths <laughs> in harmony and counterpoint and stuff like that. <laughs> Let me just say, I have no formal training or qualification. So whatever you want to say, just say. Don't worry. <laughs> no, no, um, well, when I when I was being educated, you know, I was being educated in in Western European music, right? Which I, you know, and so it was very it was very important to understand these rules and how composers like WC would would. Um, break these roles and created his own sound, you see. But I also um, I also feel that it's it's so in pounded into my head maybe that you know how am I going to how as a composer, you know, if I'm composing something, how am I going to break it and feel that it's my voice, or am I doing it intentionally? Do you see, I, you know, they're, they're just all these 
deep conversations that go on in my mind and then in a way shut me down. Well, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, there is a comment on the screen from someone. I don't know how helpful this might be in your you know, personal conversations. You know, yes, my yeah. compositions are inspired by my influences. Sometimes I compose at times with a musician I'm writing for. Thank you, Mino. I met Mino in, in the Seychelles, just a great, great guy, composer. Okay. okay. Yeah. Before we move on, I want to know about what was the title of your first composition? And then we have a question here from Grace. This is um, Grace is actually a female African composer from Nigeria composes quite a lot, is performed in different parts of the world. So first of all, what is the name of your first composition, the one that got published by ABRSM? And then if you can answer her question, that would be great. Okay. Um, um, the first composition is uh, my opus one, number one, is um, two, two, Bovi, T-U, T-U, G-B-O-V-I. Yes, and it's based on a uh, lullaby, that was sung to me in Ghana. It's an other lullaby. Okay. Yeah. And she wants to know, as a pianist and now a composer, is there anything you are hoping for to explore from African composers? Absolutely. Um, so I, you know, um, I had the real fortune to be able to put a, an anthology of piano music by composers of Africa and the African diaspora. And one big hole for me was women composers, you know, and from the African, from the African um, continent. And so it would be really great to be able to have, you know, women composers from the African, com um, you know, send music out, send music out to us to perform, you know, and if there are possibilities to publish and all that kind of stuff, we have to have your voice out there too. So, um, Gracie, please send some stuff, you know, and let us hear your voice too, you know. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, for those who are not aware, um, if you visit the African Composers Facebook page, we have posted the call from our guest composer and performer um, of today, calling for works by, as he just said, African women composers and female composers of the African diaspora. So mm -hmm. that's available. We might touch upon that again, but yeah. he has highlighted that. You are invited to submit your works. I'm not going to say anything more than that. <laughs> um, okay. You... So it's almost touching upon what Grace has just said, but I would like to talk more about this subject. Okay. What do you look for in a composition? Because, and I want to quickly add this, this to the question. If we, use, if we use myopic lenses to look at what we want, or uh, lenses that focus on only particular subjects, um, we might exclude Africans that don't compose in particular styles or don't use particular forms. So if you want to create an anthology mm -hmm. and it's titled African composers, piano music, mm -hmm. what are you looking for? Is it the composers or is it the type of music? Wow, that's multi-layered. Well, let me preface, if, I, if, I, if, if I may preface it this way. So when I moved, when I moved to Seattle, Right, and I, you know, I came on this year of leave of absence, and and I somewhere I made the decision that I really wanted to do a recital of piano music by composers of African descent. Okay, and what I had to do for myself was to not play anything by Bach. Chopin, Beethoven, Foray, nothing. Just go and and just practice. So I started practicing, you know, so I found these scores, Joshua Uzoigwe's talking drums, and I started playing them. And having lived with them for maybe a month or so, I was beginning to get these aha moments, 
Do you see what I mean? Um, I was playing a piece by um, by Jima Labi, you know, and I remember looking at the score and it just looked almost impossible to play, you know, and just spending some time with it. Again, I started hearing, started, oh, this is the Gahu rhythm. This is this and this is that. I just had to really, for myself, um, get rid of those um, those things about Bach or Beethoven that I was taught where the phrase has to go here. The phrase has to go there. There's a peak and then it comes off. You know, in, in some of the music that we hear of Joshua Uzoigwe, what is called minimalism, you know, which is really taken from West African drumming practices, right? And where the, the music is about being in the present moment, right? And therefore, I had to live with that. Do you see what I mean? To be able to really understand and play this music, do you see? So after that, when it came to choosing pieces by composers of African descent and Af the Af Africa and the African diaspora, I, I, in a way, I had, I had dispensed with any kind of um, ideas which, which, um, which made me decide whether a certain piece was good or not. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I just had to, I chose the pieces from what I just felt I was responding to just in the, in, in the moment, do you see? And if there was something which sounded really different and I was also more attracted to it because it was different too. So um, that's how I went that's how I went about picking pieces for the anthology. Okay. And I had so many pieces I'd wanted to include, um, but I was really limited to only five volumes of so many pages of music. So that was also an issue that I had to deal with. So um, there was a time, there was a, there was a point in, in the whole process of putting the anthology together where, um, you know, a composer, um, no, I'll just say it. I can you bust scenes, um, scenes from traditional life where he has, you know, in Ghana, in West African music, uh, our music can just easily flow from three, four to six, eight, you know, three, three pulses per measure and then two pulses, you know, it's just, and so there are places where even the right hand can feel in three, four and the left hand can feel in six, eight, right? But, you know, we were, you know, the editors, you know, were talking, you know, we're having discussions about how is this going to be written out? How is this going to be published? You know, because people in Europe may not understand you know, this, um, this grouping of, you know, how, you know, and, and um, I had to be like an ambassador between <laughs> Dr. Yuba and, and Oxford University, the publishers, you know, and we finally settled on putting in the beginning a uh, three, four, six, eight. Do you see what I mean? Okay. So, you know, music by composers of African descent can just flow in and out of the measures and, you know, and, and um, you have to, you just have to embrace it, you know, it's so good. I'm going to jump still back to that question. Uh -oh. music, of composers by Af uh, music by composers of African descent. Mm -hmm. When it comes to you, it fil you filter it based on what what speaks to you, I suppose, you know, what you feel when you hear the music. The thing is, a composer who is an African might send something to you that sounds as if it's written in the style of Mozart or Bach. Or what then happens to that composer's work? It doesn't get published. 
I can. In your anthology, I mean. Yeah, it would. Okay, so it just depends on how you feel about the music. So it's not that you say, um, Africans are welcome to submit, but not in this style. Oh, no, no, no. They just welcome to, you know, and and I'll see how it, you know how it would fit anywhere. You see, okay. I, I don't want to be like a gatekeeper as to, you know, what is, you know. That's a constant battle, yeah. Even on this platform, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, <laughs> it's very important not to do that, you know, because that's in a way that's how that's how um, oh. How can I put this? Um, that's how music, in a way, up till recently, has been um, edited out. You know, not only skin color. You know, not only you know people's skin color has edited their. I mean, you know, anybody heard of Montague Ring? You know, Montague Ring was this uh, composer in England, you know, and she had to put on this, Mont her name was Ida Aldridge, and um, and she put on this, um, uh, you know, sub name, you know, for lack of a better term, called Montague Ring. So people couldn't really tell whether she was, you know, she was a, man, you know, she was a woman or a man, right? And she was of African origin, too, you know. And but her music just was edited out, you know. And, and it's only now with this whole Black Lives Matter and and stuff that's going on that people are really paying attention. Uh, yeah, there's this amazing music out there, you know. And whether it's in four part harmony. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's just it's just really interesting okay uh there's this comment i don't know if you would like to address it because you used the expression neo-colonialism so uh -huh. target is saying this idea of neo-colonialism in ideas about composition is interesting falasha one day wrote in western style but used nigerian folk melody in his african suite for strings and that's great you see and that's great. And so did Samuel Courage Taylor. Okay. You know, Samuel Courage Taylor, who was very much, uh, you know, admired by Elgar, you know, wrote the African Swedes, wrote 24 Negro melodies. And when you listen to them, they're like, they're these amazing rhapsodies and, and uh, uh, beautiful compositions based on melodies from different parts of the African continent and the, you know, and Negro spirituals, you see. So, uh, you know, but, you know, these are all questions that have to be, you know, I, I struggle with them, you know. We have one question on the screen. How yeah. has the concept of African pianism influenced you as a composer and and performer. Uh oh. I don't know whether have I been kicked off or something. I'm not sure. Ah, <laughs> just me that went off. <laughs> oh, okay. I still how, hear you. <laughs> how has the concept of African pianism influenced you as a composer? You know, um, I think it. I think it really has, you know, um, um, there's all this great music, you know, by composers of, of Africa where they've used the piano, not only as a um, melodic instrument, but as a percussive instrument. And, um, and I think, I wouldn't say it's, it's influenced me as a composer because I really, I, I'm really such a novice at that. But as a performer, I've, I found it really interesting and just really fun to perform the works of Joshua Uzoigwe, again, I always come back to his name, um, or even um, Jima Labi. Um, it's, it's, it has, it really has. 
<laughs> okay. So, I, and I like to program their music because it really is, um, it's just so fresh and wonderful. Another, another person who I would call in that style would be Fred Onofuero Suoke, who's got um, 24 etudes in African rhythm. They're really, really cool, you know. This comment I think we should put on the screen now, okay? I want to think that African music doesn't exist in a vacuum. We have many influencers. Composers have many influences. Perhaps we must allow African composers to choose their own voice. That's from Nalumino Mundia. Thank you very much for your comments, everybody, and questions. So, comes back to that, the question we answered earlier. Mino, I, I totally agree. I totally agree with him. Um, they, they must choose their own voice, you know. Um, composers need to choose their own voice. I mean, there's no other way. You know, everybody has a voice and, and nobody is in a vacuum. I agree. And, um, well, that's why for even pianism, I mean, you're using an African, uh, a Western European instrument, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, African pianism, that's a completely different subject uh, that maybe we will not address today. But okay. it ties into what I said before. If you are going to prepare an anthology and you call it African pianism, that's automatically going to exclude quite a few people because they will say, well, I like to for piano, but I'm, and I'm an African, but they don't want me in this anthology. I suppose it's, listen, it's fair, right? If your music doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. It might fit somewhere else. Uh, yeah, but you know, I, <laughs> you don't agree? Yeah, you know what? You know what's interesting is, um, I think we as um, people in the Af in Africa and the African diaspora, um, are able to move very fluidly between Western music and African music. I do, and I'm sure, you know, everybody else there um, out there does. And so, um, you know, I think the world is the world is your, you know, is yours. You can do whatever you want, you know, and that's why, you know, I was you know, really reacting against the whole thing being, oh, you need to make your music a little more African. You know, what does that mean? You know, I think that's, you know, that's putting one in a box and stereotyping them, of course, already. Okay. Yeah. I just put this um, comment on the screen just for us to have a look. I would like to put uh, the question that one of your I guess people who are interested in your works uh, and what you do posted or sent to us earlier. So I'll put that on the screen now. I have not heard the question myself, so this will be a surprise for me and for you. <laughs> okay. Um, do I need to play it? I was talking, oh, sorry. He also performs the works of African composers. So sorry. So I'm going to play his um, question now to you. Yeah. And then you can respond to it. So it's about three minutes. It's three minutes, 38 seconds long. Okay. Hello, Dr. Nyaho. Hi. <laughs> and it's and, uh, oh, yeah. It's a great pleasure to um, watch you have this conversation today on the African Composers platform. Many thanks to Dr. Edewede. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you on the release of your most recent album, Kete. Uh, it's such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful recording, you know, many beautiful pieces uh, in the album. I'd like to thank you for uh, making the path for us or making the path wider for those of us coming behind. I've been uh, such a huge fan of yours for over 10 years. I've been following your work. Uh, in fact, I have all the volumes of your uh, the piano music of Africa and the African diaspora and the, the recordings, your CDs, I have all of them. <laughs> so wow. thank it's been you. Such, um, an amazing experience, you know, following your work and being inspired. Uh, that's, that's great. Congratulations. So I have two questions. 
Yeah. Uh, one, the first one is, uh, in 2005, uh, there was uh, a conference uh, convened by the late uh, Professor Akinyuba at the University of Pittsburgh in, in Pennsylvania on African pianism, the keyboard music of Africa. And in, uh, I was reading essays from that conference and I saw um, you know, an argument by the late Joshua Ozoigwe that uh, most of the uh, composition you know, for piano by African composers are not even well known on the continent. Um, I've thought about that quite a lot, you know, as a, a pianist that champions this course, you know, you've performed and recorded uh, widely. What is your take on that? Uh, do you think that compositions, especially compositions from West Africa, that they need to have more of their compositions performed on the continent? Do you think that, uh, you know, music, uh, concert goers, you know, music, music, music scholars in, um, in Africa need to hear more of the piano music because it, it seems that most of the recordings and performances of such works are rather, you know, in, in, in the West. So what's your take on that? That's I, one. I, I, then my second yeah. question is, I've noticed, uh, quite frankly, that most of the compositions by, uh, especially for piano, for piano by composers of uh, uh, West African uh, descent, uh, mostly, uh, mostly solo pieces, solo pieces, solo pieces, solo pieces for piano. Pieces for piano. Um, uh, do you think, do you that, think that, that perhaps it might be helpful to have maybe, maybe more of compositions for uh, piano and orchestra, or uh, piano, piano and orchestra, piano and orchestra, piano and orchestra, piano and orchestra, piano and piano and maybe even give uh, works of such composers uh, more uh, uh, acceptance and also bring their works to you know global attention. Do you think that that would count in any way? Uh, I know, I know of such compositions. Maybe there are very few. Uh, recently, uh, I know of uh, uh, a piece by Fredo. Uh, maybe sort of you know, compositions in that. In that, in that, in that, in that but I'm looking, looking at the at possibility of having compositions, you know, for piano, piano and orchestra, orchestra by composers uh, uh, from, from West Africa, Africa or other, other parts of the continent. continent. Uh, do, do you think, think that would go a long way to bring their work to a larger audience? Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, the, fir the, the first question I um, seriously, uh, I, the, the, my anthology was, was really one of the most important things I had mentioned to Oxford University Press was that I really wanted it to be available on the African continent. And um, I mean, it, it is there, but not to the extent that it really should be in terms of the availability. And, um, and so that's, that, that's a bit of a problem. Um, and, you know, and I get issues about needing to send it to, you know, retailers in different parts of the continent and how difficult it is and so on and so forth. So um, usually when I've gone to Ghana and so on and so forth, I take some and, you know, give them as gifts or whatever, you know. Um, but yeah. And then the second part of it is perhaps, um, we need to find a way, a source to um, to commission. You know, we need to find a way to commission composers more on the African com continent. You know, composers need to live and they need to eat. You know, um, and usually, it's. You know, th this whole commissioning thing is 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 a real problem. It's very hard. Um, it's just very hard. But if there's a way to start something, you know, some kind of fund to commission composers, I'm sure there will be many more compositions for piano and orchestra and piano, you know, chamber music, you know. Um, on on that 
and being able to get um, get you know concert series in, in on the African continent to do that. I don't. I hope that. I hope that really answers the question. I think you've addressed it. Um, addressed what he he's, uh, he asked about. So getting the works published um, is would be one way to put the works in front of choral directors because he was wondering they compose for piano, piano solos, but what about putting them in front of orchestras as well? Um, and would that be helpful to disseminate and get their names out there? I suppose. Yes. Absolutely. 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 This ties into something that I want to ask you now about how music is selected by performers. I've interviewed Echezen Atuku, the person we just, whose video we just played. In yeah. fact, I asked him a similar question. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put, I guess, uh, maybe a saying out there that a bird that sings in the forest is not a silent bird just because we didn't hear it, you know? Yeah. So if we pick from a small pool of people, and I have seen this over and over again, mm -hmm. how do we know that we are telling the world and showing the world what breadth of music, the breadth of music that Africa has to offer. So mm -hmm. I've noticed a lot of events. One of the things that I guess pushed me to start this platform, this is one of the reasons, but not the only reason. You see a poster out there, oh, music by African composers, then you look at the names, five names. Six months down the line, another poster in another country, another event, African composers, the same names. The same names, recycled, recycled, how do you know that you are showing the world what Africa has to offer? Now, of course, you may say, well, music is available online, available to buy, available in libraries. But this is Africa we are talking about. We just talked about the question of publishing. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds, potentially thousands. I've only found about 300. I put the list online of the names that I found. I'm sure there are thousands. Okay, this is a whole continent. Yeah. If we never hear from them, <laughs> what is going on? This is adding to the misrepresentation that some of us are trying to combat or fight or discourage. That's the correct word, discourage. Yeah. Well, um, you know, just to add to that, I remember when um, I was doing this project with Oxford University Press, I really tried to reach out to composers in East Africa and even some other, you know, um, African-American composers in the U.S. And, um, and I was totally ignored, you know, um, I think may I I don't know why, but um, you know sometimes you know as they say this the squeaky wheel gets the grease, you know for composers too, you know they have to they have to put their stuff out there, you know and they have to and I am willing and I'm sure a lot of people who are um, who are into playing music and promoting music by composers of Africa and the diaspora are always looking for pieces to play, you know. Okay, so that's an open invitation. Brush up, polish up, and then uh, send your works to our guests, composer <laughs> and performer of today. Have and Duca also, because he's such a, he's such a wonderful composer as a composer, pianist, and he's really doing amazing work there. Who? Um, Unduka. Oh, Unduka, okay, good. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> All right, someone is saying hello. <laughs> yeah. William Aite was uh, uh, a colleague of mine, it, well, were, were schoolmates, and we did pian we did music together in, uh, in Action Water. So, okay. just wonderful. Thank, All right. you. Yeah. Thank you, William. Hello. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the call for scores that you have put out. You may not want to, I guess, give us too many details, but you have recently put out, put out a call for piano works um, for works by African female composers and composers from the African, from the diaspora. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to tell us about that call? Notice that he said he put out a call for works um, some years ago and it, for the anthologies and he got ignored or he wasn't taken as seriously as, as he should have been. So here is your chance, everybody. You want to add some more details a little bit, you know? Yeah, well, so, you know, with, you know, this year has been just an amazing, it's just been a crazy year, you know? So we've had, 
you know, we've had COVID and the shutdown. And then at the same time, we had this just brutal killings of, you know, people, you know, African, of Africans, you know, people of African descent, you know, African Americans. And there have been these marches, you know, these black, you know, black lives matter. As I say, black composers matter too. Um, um, and so there's just been this sudden awakening going on in the musical world, really, of trying to diversify music. You know, people, people have in the past talked about the black Mozart. You know, who is the black Mozart? The Chevalier de Saint Georges, who is this black guy who lived in France. And and people think he was, you know, Mozart's, you know, Mo, you know, he was an imitator of Mozart. But Mozart got his information and got the whole idea of writing dual concertantes from from uh, Chevalier de Saint Georges, when Mozart was traveling to Paris, he stayed with this amazing composer and violinist and swordsman. You know, so now people are being getting aware that all of you know, there are these black composers around the world, you know, who were doing a lot of amazing things. I don't know how they were canceled out until now, but. Um, it's all to say there's this really amazing push to bring music from different parts of the world. And I've been talking to Oxford University Press and, you know, we've been having all these conversations, you know, about, um, about music and, you know, trying to create more representation. That's why I'm saying if you have music, let us know. Let me know, because you never know. You know, as as a performer and in Duca too, and all these amazing performers, Maria Thompson, who's a composer and um, and a phenomenal pianist, or Nena Oguo, who is um, this amazing pianist in New York. You know. We are all looking for this music and we need women composers represented from the African continent. And that's all I'm saying. I'm just pleading, send your stuff out. You never know. Exactly, if only people know. <laughs> no, I mean, it's true, you know. Plain as you can make it, to be fair. Yeah, so yeah. it's up to you for that now. Why hide your, what? I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm, I'm going, why hide your light under a bushel? Okay. Okay. So we look forward to the anthology and that's the call out there for everyone who has something to submit or who is working on something for piano. I guess um, composer and um, performer of today has put out the call very clearly. We've repeated this several times now. So the message is clear and the post is on the African Composers Facebook page for those who are interested. So thank you very much. Um, before... Also, I think this question is for me. I don't think it's for you. So Bill Doggett said, uh, the same names over and over. This is most interest, a most interesting statement. Where are the African voices whose works are not elevated to canon? Well, there are quite a few of them. They must be encouraged and welcomed. Um, I don't. I did not want to dwell upon the points you just raised. But, but I think I better say because of what Bill has, Mr. Bill Doggett has just put on the, on the, um, in the comments. Yeah. Where are the African voices whose works are not elevated to canon? Well, you see, perspectives matter. When you were saying there is more recognition of works of people, you said black people or black composers. I heard that, but I don't accept it because perspectives matter. I grew up aware of the works of African composers in Africa. Mm -hmm. Many of them are quite famous, maybe mm -hmm. in their own countries or in the towns or cities. So when we speak, I think we should maybe watch or present it as if it's coming from a particular perspective. I think the perspective you are talking about is the Western perspective or the Western, what they call the Western world. Because in reality, just because an American has never heard of Jude Nam, for example, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It doesn't mean that we don't perform Jude Nam in most Catholic churches in Nigeria at least once a month. I haven't done the research, but I've traveled enough and I can tell you, this is somebody who is beloved. Mm -hmm. so perspectives matter. So when he said, where are the African voices? It depends on the perspective. Elevated to canon, which canon? And then who is doing the listening and who is doing the picking? So I don't accept global information as, as local information. Whatever is happening that people are saying they now recognize black composers, that just, whatever, listen, they've always been there. Have you searched for them? They've always been there. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I agree with you. Um, but I, I would say we're talking about global, you know, you know, these amazing composers. I mean, who I understand. Decides, huh? Who decides what is global? That is something else we need to shift. I don't have to sit down as an African and accept that what um, a North American says is global is global. And I stop there. So why is it that it's only the recognition by people in a particular part of the world that makes that, that, makes that composer valid? I don't think people are saying that um, being recognized elsewhere in America or in Europe makes a composer valid. All we're saying is that, or is or all I'm saying is that there's this great stuff that needs to be heard all over the world, you know. And so, for example, this this reminds me when I was a student in Oxford. Um, maybe that was one of the first time I I put on. You know, we in in Oxford we were really allowed, you know, encouraged to just do whatever we wanted in terms of putting recitals on. And so I got um, my big cousin in Ghana to send me scores of Ifrem Amu. And we had, and I helped teach um, this, this choir I put together. And we did a whole set of Ifrem Amu's music in Oxford. And what was cool was, with that was that we also um, accompanied, um, the program was Ephraim Amu's choral music and then Brahms Liebes Lieder waltzes. Do you see? And it was so cool, you know? And those people who heard the Ephraim Amu music and those who actually learned the tree and it was just so wonderful. And all I'm saying is this to, to you know, us in the African continent, I, I know you are well respected and highly respected in your countries. But can, but let's share this with the world. You know, that's, what I'm that's my yeah. point. That's what I'm saying. It's not as if it is hidden. No. It is the person that is outside that needs to do the searching. So when I hear proclamations like, "Oh, Africa has so many wonderful composers," I never knew. I think. They, they weren't born five minutes ago. They, How come you never knew? <laughs> I, I agree with you. But you know what? You know what? I would, I mean, I would say that it also, um, for, for some of us who have lived in, um, on the African continent uh, or have been in Europe and so on and so forth, we need to also um, do our best to find these things. And I was looking for that. I looked for that for many years, you know? <laughs> and where we're going to. 99, you know, I was almost what? I would now be dating myself. I don't want to date myself. <laughs> but anyway, it, it just, my whole, my whole mind was just blown wide open. In 1999, when I heard all these amazing composers, right? In in uh, in Pittsburgh, you know, with Professor Akinuba's uh, conference, you know, okay. we are we are approaching the end of the con oh, of the uh, much so, fun. but <laughs> you've just you've just um, brought another question to mind. Of yes. uh, this is about now, an African is an African full stop. But what I have discovered since stepping outside of Africa mm -hmm. is. It seems as if an African who is in a country outside Africa is a more relevant African. So 
this I think also contributes to the same people being performed over and over again. I've seen that you may have a composer sitting in Africa performing, uh, sorry, writing, being performed, but when an event on the global stage is put together, they just pick the one that is studying in an American university, in a British university, in Canada, in Australia, it's the same people. If you don't happen to have put yourself physically outside the continent, forget it, you don't exist. So we need platforms to push you know, these names forward. And then of course, we need to encourage people to be willing to take the names without riot, without rancor, without hatred, because that's not the African style. It's Africans see themselves as part of the world, not right. as people right. begging to be accepted. But I'm just speaking from experience. Yeah. yeah. Same names, you can pick up the posters and check. There was even an, an event recently on the BBC talking about black composers, a forgotten history. And of course, you expect an African will rush to that event, well, a black African anyway, thinking they would see, wow, there's going to be a variety here. No. <laughs> you know? And for us as Africans, we need to be very careful as well. Because when the expression black is used, there is a chance that not many Africans will be represented. Mm -hmm. That is factual, especially if you go on Google. You will see it when you look for certain terms, search for certain terms, you notice that when it comes to Africans, it's, mm, you're not quite the, what we mean, even though the expression Africa occurs, it's not really you, we mean people elsewhere. So that's something we need to be very careful about. This is based on research that I've done and mm -hmm. what has led to the creation of this platform. It's, mm -hmm. There is a subsuming, there's an eclipse that is hiding Africans. Mm -hmm. I think we need to be very careful about it, but this is just my opinion. Um, no, no, that's very valid. That's extremely val valid. And it's um, extremely important that, um, I, I, you know, I, I just love that comment for all the reason why, you know, you know, now that there's this, you know, availability, you know, through, through platforms like yours, we can get this information out, you know. I mean, seriously, you're doing some you're doing some amazing work by by you know creating this uh, platform so that you know others can find you know find a way to get their voices heard in different places, different parts of the world. Okay. And it doesn't it doesn't you know. It, it, and it doesn't invalidate those who do not want to. No, no. no. Um, and I will just show you an example of what I mean before I ask the last question and then we move on. So that's an example of what you will find. Well, maybe for the British alone, um, because I think it's obviously location based. You type in African composers and this is the result you get. Now, mm -hmm. some may say, so what? Well, the problem is Africa does have composers, doesn't it? So you end up on having to scroll down and then you find something that is speaking specifically of African composers. We don't want of African descent because when you click on that list, very few are what some may call uh, currently on the African continent. I don't know how people choose to differentiate these things, but these things matter because somebody looking for music, it's the internet, everybody's in a hurry. I've got this, I'll buy this, buy this, buy this. Before they scroll down, although we have come up quite a bit you know, on the list on this, in terms of the search, we used to be on the second page or so, and then we started to rise between eight, five. Now we're quite high up on the Google search list, which is good. But it's not just the AfricanComposers.com website. Absolutely not. Anybody, everybody can influence the results. But we have to get to a healthier place. That's that's just my perspective. And I'm not, I'm quite clear about it. That if you are going to use a particular label, mm -hmm. if you are going to use a particular name, why don't you, why not become specific? Why not? Because I know certain people get picked above certain people. I've experienced it since coming to Britain. It's simple, it's clear. They pick the preferred group and everybody else is shunned. Um, and I don't think that's healthy. I think we should reach into the continent and say, this is also an African. Stop picking somebody that's next to you. Don't ignore a whole continent just because, for example, me, where they am sitting here. And I always say it in, in as much as possible. I'm not um, qualified. I haven't got like lots of training in music composition. Mm -hmm. Even the people you want to speak to, <laughs> just because I'm here doesn't mean you speak to me and you stop. So I do that as much as possible. I just push other people forward, but never mind. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, another thing I just want to put um, um, to put out there is North African composers. I think also are somewhat neglected. Or 
or you know, we reach out a lot into um, sub-Saharan Africa, right? And we're not getting enough composers from North Africa, you know. It's just I'm just putting it out there. And if they're right. North African composers, pianists, we need to hear from them too. I am not going to disagree with you. Although what I have found is okay, maybe I haven't found many of them, but the ones that I have found, they think they are quite successful uh, in North Africa and beyond. So the few that I have found are quite, quite successful. Concerts all the time, always being performed, but you're absolutely right. In fact, somebody reached out to me some months ago, I think from East Africa, and he said he wanted to work with us to bring mm -hmm. in French-speaking Africans. Yeah. That's another perspective. <laughs> so, absolutely, yeah. Good, okay. Uh, one last comment and then one last question before we go, but don't worry, you, you're you going to enjoy the question, hopefully. Um, African composers must be welcomed on the global stage. A larger perspective of what is African and African-American composition is critical. Um, good, so thank you very much for that comment. And uh, also we need to bear in mind that uh, if we're talking about anybody who is not, maybe not from the continent as some may say, the African hyphen anything is from everywhere. So it's not only African-American, but I understand why he went for African-American because of where you are and because of what we've been talking about, because there are Africans all over the world. Um, but thank you, Bill, for the comment. Um, unless you want to address that, I have just one more question for you. If you had not become a musician, composer, what would you have become? Oh my gosh. Well, I really loved geography. Um, I really, really loved geography. So that was something I was, I may have been become a, geographer somehow or taught geography in university. Another thing is I just I'm crazy about anything with planes, you know. So I love the whole, you know, I love I think maybe that's uh, that's with that's tied to traveling. And and what made me a pianist too is like have 10 fingers will travel kind of thing. You know, but I love planes. I love anything planes. And so Another thing would have been to try and be a, a pilot or something in aviation. <laughs> chance maybe you fly, you know, a small intercity travel plane or your own private plane. We'll see. We'll, oh, no, see. I, well, you know, I'm, you, you you got published just this year, so anything can happen. It's, <laughs> you true, have it's true. It's true. It's very true. Oh, fantastic. So it has been a, um, an interesting conversation, I think. Uh, so yeah, I went all kinds of places. <laughs> if you have any last feedback, comments you would like to make, please feel free to take this time. Otherwise, we have come to the end of the interview. Oh, well, thank you so much, Wede. It was just a real joy having this discussion with you. And I hope we continue, we do we do more of this and, you know, bring in, you know, maybe even a panel, you know, to have this discussion. It's really, really important. And, you know, I, I can't thank you enough. Thank you, too. Thank you. I also appreciate it. Uh, thank you to everyone who has sent in questions, including HSN Atikun, who sent in a question by video. Uh, thanks yeah. for all of the comments. And... Thank you very much. Um, oh, thank you, Joe. Thank to our guest, thank you, Joe. Thank you to our guest, William Chapman Yaho, for your time. Uh, and we look forward to hearing more about what you do, and we wish you success with your future projects. Thank you so much. Thank you.